I'm so excited and thankful to have the opportunity to share with you this message today. It is finished. That's one of the last sayings that Jesus had when he was on the cross. And I believe the last words of someone who knows they're going to die are very important. But that much more important are the last words of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, as he hung on the cross. It is finished. Hallelujah. And so today we're going to go to John chapter 19. We're going to read three verses, 28, 29, and 30. And it said, after this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put it a sponge filled of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Think about that. Jesus saying, it is finished. The word, it is finished, in Greek, is tetelestai, tetelestai. And the Greek word, tetelestai, was used for a few different things. I'll talk about that in a minute. But think about this. Once a year, the Day of Atonement, the priest, the high priest, would go in, past the holy place, into the holy of holies, the representation of the place of God, and he would make a sacrifice, a temporary sacrifice, for his sins and the sins of the world. And when he came out, going through everything that needed to be done, there would be a crowd waiting, and he would come out and say, Tetelestai. In other words, it is finished. Think about that. Their sins, temporary, for one year would be taken care of. What joy they must have had. But that sacrifice that was made once a year was just temporary. It was something that wasn't complete, that wasn't fully finished because of the fact that it was a lamb that was imperfect. But there would one day come Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, hallelujah, and pay the price for all sins that would be completed. So think about this as I look at some of the passages of Scripture that tells about that. Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 through 15. It says, and every high priest stands daily at his service, offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never take away sins. Temporary covering, but never take them away. But when Christ had offered for all time a single sacrifice for sin, <laughs> he sat down at the right hand of the Father, waiting for the time until his enemy should be made a footstool for his feet. For by a single offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. And the Holy Spirit also bears witness to us after that saying. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Listen to what Isaiah, I'm going to give you a couple more verses about that. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 7. It says, he was oppressed. Jesus was oppressed during this time. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth, like a lamb that was led to slaughter, and like a sheep that was before his shears was silent. So he opened not his mouth. One of my favorite ones talking about Jesus being the Lamb of God is John speaking. In John chapter 1, verse 29, he says, And the next day he saw Jesus. That's John. He saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God that was slain, Hallelujah, who takes away the sins of the world. What Jesus is saying, it is finished, hallelujah. Tetelestai, he paid the price. Think about that word, tetelestai. Think about it, it is finished. When Jesus was saying it is finished, he's saying you owed a debt that you could not pay. And I paid that debt <laughs> that I did not owe. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. When Jesus would pay, uh, in, in those days, the Jews, they would pay off a debt. They would go into a place, pay off a debt. They'd hand them the receipt, and they would stamp that on that receipt to tell us die. Paid in full. Your debt's been paid in full by Jesus Christ. When Jesus said it is finished, he's saying that the wrath of God that is being stored up on you, think about that. The wrath of God, you may not know that. If you're not saved, the wrath of God is being stored up on you. If you are saved, before you got saved, the wrath of God is being stored up on you. Listen to what it says. 
in, in Romans chapter 2, verse 5. But because of your hard and penitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment would be revealed. You see, God is just. God is righteous. And he doesn't let sin slide. There's a price for sin. Romans 6.23 says the wages of that sin is death. But Jesus took the wrath for you. And he took it for me, the wrath of God that was going to be poured out on you. You see, we have two choices. We can spend eternity in hell, separated from God, paying the price for our sins in this life. Or we can put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ and repent of our sins and let him be the one that bore our sins on the cross. Our sin debt will be wiped away, complete and forever. When Jesus saying it was finished, he was saying that we now can come boldly to the throne. We don't need a high priest to go in for us. We can come boldly to the throne. It said when Jesus said it was finished, the veil that the high priest had to go into was tore from top to bottom, uh, signifying that we can go into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. Listen to what it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Let us then with confidence, not confidence in ourselves or anything we've done, confidence in what Jesus Christ did in the finished work on the cross, with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. When Jesus said, it is finished, He's saying every prophecy that ever was said about him was complete. Even the one that we read in this passage of scripture where he said, I thirst, which references Psalms 22, 15. When Jesus said, it is finished, he's saying that when you put your faith and you put your trust in Jesus Christ and repent of your sins. There's no more condemnation on your life. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise his holy name. When Jesus said it was finished, listen to me. This is good news. When Jesus said it is finished, he's saying, Stop trying to clean yourself up. Stop trying to be good, and do good works to be saved. You cannot do good works. Jesus is saying, come to me as you are, a broken sinner in need of a Savior. It's not by anything that you can do, anything that you can add, any way that you need to clean yourself up. Just come to him, a broken sinner. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, it said, it's only by grace are you saved. Through faith, not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not by works, at least anyone should boast. There's no works you can do. I like also what it says in Romans 11, 6. It says, but if it is by grace, which it is, it is no longer on the basis of works. Otherwise, grace would no longer be grace. Grace, an unmerited favor, nothing that you can do to deserve it. I urge you and today, that you would realize that you're never going to get good enough to come to the Lord. That you could never do enough good works to make it to heaven. Put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And sometimes we need to be reminded of this as Christians. Listen to me, Christian. Listen to what Jesus said at the end of that. He said, it is finished. And then what happened? It said, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. You know, Jesus didn't say, I'm finished. He said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We need to realize, if you've ever studied out what all Jesus went through before he even got on the cross, and the horrible things that happened to him and how he suffered and died on that cross, he died. It says he gave up his spirit and died. He died for you. He died for me. We need to be so thankful that he loved us that much. The Bible says no greater love has a man than he'd lay down his life. They didn't take his life. He laid down his life for you and for me. How could we not, out of the love that he gives us and be drawn to him, want to live the best possible life that we could to, to please our Father 
our Lord, our Savior that died on a cross. I'd like to pray right now. Father, Lord, I pray to God, Lord, that you would move upon the hearts of people. Your people that's committed their lives to you, God, Lord, that you would help them, Father God, to fall more in love with you and be drawn to you even more so by your love and empowered by your love to live a life, God, that's pleasing to you. I pray, God, Lord, for those that don't realize that you did all the work. You finished it all. You said it is finished. That people that are broken, people that are struggling with sin, just come and surrender their life to you. Put their faith and trust in you and turn away from their sin. God, and we'll give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. If God has spoke to you this morning, I encourage you just to praise him and be thankful to him. If you would, like and share this so others can hear the gospel, the good news. And when you subscribe, click all so you get some daily devotions that we have out there. I pray God would richly bless you. Have a wonderful day.